Uh, welcome, everyone. Introduction to Linux privilege escalation. Uh, yeah, actually, with me, uh, Björn Feutel. Um, yeah, who am I? I'm an InfoSec professional uh, with more than 20 years of work experience. I am CEO of three companies. I'm working as a pen tester and also as an instructor. Um, I have several industry certifications and I'm also an authorized instructor, for example, for IC Squared, ISACA, um, EC Council, and also for offensive security. And there are mostly dealing with um, courses in offensive uh, security, uh, meaning ethical hacking or pen testing. And so we are first talking about some general concept of privilege escalation, what it is, etc. And then we are taking a look at some uh, sample Linux uh, privilege escalation vectors. Again, we are here talking about um, simple uh, privilege escalation vectors, which are found, for example, in easy hack the box or easy try hack me is actually I've also made some practical examples um, in, in this part of the presentation, which all are all coming from uh, Troy Hackney. So you can also try to redo these after we have finished the webinar. I will provide you with a list of the boxes I've used there. Yeah, and then we'll close with some closing remarks. So for now, I'll start with the uh, general concepts. Actually, we are in a situation where we are already a user on some kind of command line or having some kind of shell rather than said. This could mean that we either have logged in through Telnet or SSH and are user on a machine, or we are some kind of pseudo user, which are, it could also be the uh, Apache web server, which is normally www minus run. Um, and as this user, we normally don't have too many privileges. Our goal actually would be to gain the most privileges on the machine in the fastest time possible. So why is privilege escalation possible? Well, as I've always said on my courses, administrators sometimes do stupid things. Um, we have um, some kind of misconfigurations. We have um, services, uh, process running with high privileges. Um, and also we are facing some vulnerabilities in outdated software, which are also running with higher privileges. Okay, so the first one, how to get um, to passwords for passwords for um, other users is in configuration files. Other one would be common, commonly wp uh, minus config.php, which is the config file for the uh, WordPress CMS. Uh, it contains the credentials for the database user. And the, also, if you have the um, uh, the uh, have access to the etc shadow, which you normally need root access for, um, you can extract these passwords. Okay, talking about file system permissions, um, I think you are somewhat familiar with it. So we have about three groups. We have the owner, the group, and other or called rest of the world or everyone else. Um, and we could have normally could have read, write, and executable and all of these in combination or even denied for some a certain type of files. Um, so if what we are interested in are the other files we would be able to write to. Then we have set UID or group UID. Um, well, this set UID bit lets you execute programs as the own. Okay, then we have sudo. Um, sudo lets you uh, run commands with root uh, with normally with root uh, privileges it can also be any other user but root is normal there well there's a site called gtfo bins where we can have a reference for all for all possible commands on linux and get, um, how to exploit these to getting a shell in su with suid or sudo capabilities then we have cron jobs 
Run jobs are actually uh, tasks which are running at certain intervals or certain times uh, during the day or month or week. Um, and cron jobs are normally executed with the permission of the owner of these cron jobs. Well, every user has a cron job um, or cron jobs and root also has cron jobs. These are called system cron jobs and yeah, they are executed as root. So uh, if we have some kind of word writable scripts which are executed at certain intervals through cron, we can write into them and then have these commands we have uh, put into the, into the shell, then executed as root, of course. Well, we have also can have some processes running as root. The last thing I would talk to you is kernel exploits. And actually these are, keep these as a gateway of last resort because the kernel is the core component of an operating system. And this is always running as with system privileges or with root privileges. So if we find any flaws in it, we are we could become root, but um, the, these kernel exploits are sometimes unstable or they can crash the systems. In depending on how this works, even by buffer overflow or creating some kind of race conditions, you also have to leverage or these exploits or trigger these exploits multiple times to, for them to work. And if you search for exploits, the best place actually to search for exploits would be exploit DB. And then and now we're coming to, uh, to an enumeration script. And this one is my absolute favorite. Yeah, it's called Limpius. Um, okay, now let's get to some Practical examples. Here we are. Here we are with our reverse shell. And we can see here that we are www minus data user. Now uh, we are what I first do when I have these shells. I'm trying to get a normal P, uh, TTY, fully interactive shell. Okay, so. Um, we have seen here that we have some kind of WordPress going on. So, um, well, if we have a WordPress or some other kind of content management system or some other PHP script, which is database driven, um, we may take a look at the config file. And for, and for WordPress, this is wp-config.php. And if we scroll up here a bit, we see that we have now have a MySQL database username of code, which was actually also the one which was um, which was there in uh, in uh, in the uh, back end of the CMS. And also we have some very secure database password. And now let's see whether this one also is a user here on the system. And we can see here that he is. And well, as I said, um, let's try to become this root user. Um, we do it by SU. So um, uh, SU minus and then the username. Oops, this one. And there we are. Here we are the normally used now on, on this machine. So we have, what we have now done is we have actually gotten from ww minus run to code. And code is a normal user. So we did some, let's say, um, uh, 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 horizontal privilege escalation. And as I said, as soon as I get to a normal user being on the system and code, well, he actually is one, uh, he is the only one on the system. So Maybe this is an administrator. So let's try sudo minus L. For this one, I need the password. So, but we have that. It's called cybersecurity. And here we are. Here we are. We have these um, uh, commands which we can run as root. Uh, well, and for these, I need the password as well. Um, so actually, now 
I don't know. I don't really know how can, for example, how can I exploit user bin FTP? And there I go to the GTFO bins. And there I have a lot of commands here and some of these are SUID, sudo. But now we are searching for, for example, for the FTP. And yeah, we can use sudo with that one. And here we are, sudo. And there we do sudo FTP, and then we can run shell commands, obviously. So we can run this command as soon as we started that. Well, let's try that out. OK, now we get this uh, record there, and then we say ID, and there we are. So now we have gotten to first from www minus run to code, and then from that to root. Um, hopefully to see you uh, once again in one of my webinars. And yeah, for now, have a nice weekend, everyone. Thanks for attending. See ya.